bench or um, Connor might start arguably, and you might move things around that way. I just, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an experience, an old pack that I've gone with really. Uh, Whitehead being probably the only one under 30 uh, in the starting <laughs> pack that I've picked. Sam Burgess is just under 30 at the moment, isn't he? Still, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess what we'd ask for is other people to get their Match Day 17s in ahead of next week's show. Uh, me and Tim, I think it is next week, can run through those. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to, to get other people's point of view. As I said, my, I, I think I, I think mentioned it last time I was on the show, and you, you kind of you put the suggestion out there about Connor, and it, it's a pure prejudice thing. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have him in my team. So, so therefore, the fact that he's in the nineteen irks me a bit, and therefore he's definitely not. He's definitely twice since since like we last spoke, though. Two hours. Yeah, no. Well, I, again, again, it's a prejudice, though, isn't it? It's not. It's not based on ration, rationale. <laughs> it's a prejudice. So, so. Is so, there so, any so, players? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jack, but, uh, <laughs> but that's just the way it is. He he doesn't care. I don't suppose he likes. No, no, God no. He, he, he don't care what other players think. He definitely don't care what a. Uh, um, you know, minus Pocus uh, horse says, so, so there you go, but no. What do you, um, is there anyone you think is unfortunate to miss out, or do you think most of the people who are missing from the squad are the people who are out with injuries like Gale and um, that's pretty, um, uh, uh, Watkins, obviously, they're the two big names missing from the what would have been in the World Cup lineup. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you are picking from a, um, you know, from from a squad that, that's limited by injuries, but but you'll be doing that at the end of the season as well. Um, so so that, that that's just the nature of the beast, I think. Promoting um, people like Connor and Thompson on form. I mean, we'll you know Connor to one side, but Luke Thompson on form. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. From what was the England night squad that was announced, that's a, a positive move, isn't it? It shows that there's no. It does show that point that they've made that there's no door closed, uh, and and everyone's open for selection for the main England side. Yeah, absolutely. No, no I, I, I applaud that that approach to it without question. Um, so yeah, so obviously Luke Thompson, you know, again, th- 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 he's been he's been the, almost the best prop in, in in you know certainly the best prop in Super League in the first half of the season. So so he's, he's an automatic selection for me, whether he was in the night squad or whatever. So 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 yeah, we'll we'll I guess we'll see what other people think. Yeah, I suppose one omission who was a, a World Cup player was is Mike McMeekin, who um, I, I'm a little bit surprised has missed out but I think the, the form of late just of George Burgess coming back into things for South has probably meant that he's got into the squad and there just wasn't enough room for another back rower and the other person who would be the talking point I suppose is Sam Tompkins because until two weeks ago I'm pretty sure most people would have been having him nailed on as the uh, as the fullback given the other situations with, with injuries in those half positions and um and knows that Cardacre obviously available and that sort yeah. of stuff, but I mean, we, we are we're not shocked. When you we? look at the squad, you are kind of you are moving people around to full back, aren't you? That that are not natural, um, either not naturally there for the clubs or or there as utility value. So whether you put Lomax there or Ratchford or um, anybody I mean, else, really, have a go there if he if he was blinded in training. Well, this thing, I mean, obviously we didn't play there, didn't we? Most recently, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's because we've got a, we've got a weakness there in terms of depth, um, which means that we're Do you slightly think we've got a weakness in terms. What in the halves, not at fullback. We're, every one of those players has been a top draw fullback at one point or another, or still is. Uh, <laughs> well. well it's half there, where, there, we're, there are, where we've got more question marks, but we'd have been running games in the NRL from half back again this year. You can't, you can't pull him out of that. Well, not from no. he's been playing six. He's been wearing six, but from what I know of St George, they basically play it kind of a split most of the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think internationally, you just play. You know, it's 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 just a number on the back, isn't it? They play split halves, and, yeah. and that's the way it is. So he's one of those for me. And yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just. International's always like that, though, isn't it? You're always you're always squeezing people in um, into positions. Well, rep, rep games traditionally have been a lot like that. You know, you've seen a lot of centres playing on the wings or fullbacks playing on the wings in state of origin in Australian sides, yeah, and it's not hurt them at all, has it? So yeah, exactly. It's not it's not the best, you know, left winger and then the right winger, is it? You know, it's the it's the best two wingers and, yeah. and etc. So so yeah. We'll okay, see. Uh, do you want to take us on to what was the 
slowest breaking news <laughs> <laughs> of probably the last, well, of the season so far, really. Of the season uh, so far, yeah. Yeah. It's almost as slow as a player movement um, uh, from west to east. But anyway, so former Everton chief executive Robert Elston has been appointed in a similar role with Super League Europe. Elston, who was director at member club Castleford Tigers, has been at Everton for 13 years before stepping down last month. He was employed with the Rugby Football League during the mid-1990s and worked for Deloitte as a chartered accountant. And he said, I would like to thank the Super League clubs for giving me the opportunity. Like so many sports, we face many challenges. However, we take with us a greater number of much sought-after advantages and attributes, not least our players, our fans, our great clubs and the heritage and values of a fantastic sport. If we can bring all that together, I'm confident that the game can look forward to a bigger and better future. Yeah, I mean... So, yeah, as you say, the the, the worst kept secret, um, <laughs> particularly when Everton announced it. It wasn't even a secret, <laughs> was it? I think no. it's, it, it's, it, it was strange that this didn't come out till what, Thursday, the press release, when he started his job on the Monday. Um, that just emphasises what, what level of work he's got ahead of him. Hopefully, yes. Bringing some si- some sort of united vision together, at least at the top of the sport in Super League, and then hopefully being able to use that to direct things for a more positive relationship across the sport. I mean, he's got experience of working in the RFL. He's worked in different clubs, and and all of that. And he's obviously well qualified for the role. Yes, no, 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 without that question. Enough. I think in terms of that side of things, enough has been said about how it seems to be a positive appointment and everyone should back him and support him. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's it's, it's about how he's going to implement things now. That statement was just that. It was just a kind of welcoming statement. It it doesn't really lay down too much about the detail and I wouldn't expect it to at this stage. Do you think we're going to get an open dialogue or do you think he's going to be working hard behind the scenes and we won't really get much... uh, FaceTime as supporters, as it were, with with someone like Robert Elston. I'm I'm not sure we sh- we really should. Um, it's up to him to pull the strings and and get the right deals. Um, you know, I, th- I think everybody said, you know, one of the criticisms of Nigel Wood wasn't it that he had too many hats and he wasn't really it was too big a job. Um, so it's probably it's logical that that, that the, the the top of our sport kind of has has their own, you know chief exec um you need to overcome some of the potential disadvantages of leaving the rest of the game behind really um and making sure that they're not just fending for super league um but yeah yeah there has to be a clear link to the whole game strategy it's just who's running that whole game strategy it becomes the next question doesn't it i suppose down the the way for us well well, that's the question isn't it it's a huge transition for our game in this country at the moment yeah it's as i say i guess when we find out who the I would hope when we get an RFL chief appointed, it would be a new face and it'd be somebody with a, hopefully with a similar kind of CV behind them um, that Elston's got. But you know, somebody who can uh, come at it with a with a fresh perspective. I, I would hope. Yeah, um, an, outsi- an, outs- an outsider who's not completely outside, but who is not um, part of the establishment the current assembly yeah. I think that'd suit yeah definitely I mean I have to I have to say um, I've forgotten his name now but the, the guy who the guy who had the tennis background who came in um, in the Richard early 2000s Lewis. Richard Lewis thank you um, Richard Lewis Lewis anyway was his surname he was it was he was Richard um, I, I I think he did a, he did a very good job you know he had that sports administration background but in a completely different field I think he actually did a very good job he, he you know, there was, at that time we had some big sponsorships. I don't think that was entirely accidental. Um, you know, kind of big household name kind of stuff. Um, and you know, we you've we, got to be open to to new innovations in the kind of in, the, in broader sport rather than just looking at people who've been been around the sport yeah, already. Yeah, I, I do agree. I think the first half of Lewis's tenure was certainly well worked. I think he kind of had a lot of brought a lot of good things into the game as well and and so you'd want people to come in and do new good things but you want them to continue it and and basically not i, I felt in lewis's tenure it kind of slowed down at the back end and it, it didn't really hand over a fully functioning organization and and there wasn't didn't seem like there was much of a comp- 
competition for the role after that it kind of just was a handed down role and I think we were on the back foot at that stage with licensing starting to hit the rocks with some clubs being in serious financial difficulties and no real clear plan about who was meant to help guide these clubs through the licenses phases and, and all that sort of stuff um, and I, I just think uh, and, and now we've been in that period a little bit with no clear strategy for the game and, and that sort of stuff I, I want us to, it'd be good to get a leader appointed to get a new initiative going forward kind of almost whoever it is really bad rather it be someone who's who's not out for themselves as well which I feel like at the moment there's people doing self promotion tours almost and they're not really they're not really doing anything for the game from what I can tell um, no. but hopefully that's not necessarily the truth there does seem to be the odd thing going on that's that's a positive like the the, the couple the uh, cup double headers for the semi-final which tickets my ticket arrived today for that so that's well in advance so that's an unusual as well for the, uh, for the rugby football league so that's a positive too to, to nod to them right we'll start rolling through some of the club based news now I'm going to start with a with um, Warrington Wolves, who've signed versatile forward, well, middle unit forward, Jason Clark from the South Sydney Rabbitohs on a two-year deal starting from next year, 2019. Clark, who's 28, was told he was surplus to requirements at Redfern beyond this year, prompting a fans' petition to try and persuade the club to change their mind. Obviously, the fans kind of saw him when he was coming through as a future legend of the club, and it's it's not quite materialised beyond just being a very good player for the club uh, the, the 2014 Premiership winner who has made over 150 appearances for the Rabbitohs will now move to Super League next year do you want to tell yeah, us what else so has happened at Warrington I will yes yeah. so, so Warrington Wolves halfback Declan Patton has signed a new two year contract extension to keep him with the Super League club until November 2020 the 23 year old came through the Wise Academy and was part of the side that won the league leaders shield in 2016 yeah, we've had a few of the Warrington fans who get in touch with us regularly getting in touch with us about this news story. So Lee Whitnell said, Delighted. I was sure we'd lose him at the end of the season. He needs Steve Price to trust him as Kev Brown's long-term successor now, rather than bringing in an Aussie six. And Mike Dodd said, Always good to keep hold of homegrown talent. And he's looked a very a different player since coming off the bench at Hooker. So, um, so yeah, positives there from, from the Warrington fans. Uh on that story no one got in touch on the clock story do you have any view on either of those two bits of business I think uh, it's always good to retain your kind of your homegrown talent so um, you know Patton deserves a chance to um, to get over the growing pains that, that, that tends to happen with young halves um, you know we've seen it with plenty, plenty of um, plenty of youngsters that have come through that have struggled to to kind of push on after showing that, those initial sparks so um, he's got a bit of time now um, but yeah, he does need to find a home, doesn't he? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure coming off the bench as, as Hooker is is his long term future. Um, but no, yeah, but we, you know, it's, it's always have, have done spells at that recently with Hooker being a basically dummy half rather than Hooker. Let's face it, half, now. it's yeah, not a forward yeah, yeah. anymore, is it? It's a it's a pivot position, yeah. But yeah, well, as I said, and, and Jason Clark, yeah, you know, it's it's a bit it's a bit un- uninspiring, but. Um, but I guess we'll see. We'll see what he uh, what he turns at, out like. At the least, is a fairly consistent sort of player, and you're not going to get too many below seven out of ten kind of games out of him. But you might not get any ten out of ten games out of him kind of thing. Is the way I see uh, see that signing. Okay, moving on to the most complicated. Uh, yeah, explain this one. of the week, <laughs> and it's Salford who have signed witness pair Greg Burke and Ed Chamberlain on loan until the end of the season, with Weller Haraki moving in the other direction to witness. Um, outside For back Chamberlain, <laughs> who's 22, and 25-year-old prop Burke will join the Red Devils permanently from 2019. So that's kind of why they were allowed to go early Haraki who's 33 he's going to fill in for Hep Cahill the, the news press release cut sort of said about this one because obviously that injury has, has hit them a lot in the back row although he did play second row rather than uh, loose forward on the weekend did well Haraki and obviously we've now found out as well confirmed that he's actually signed for Hull KR for next year which again might have been part of the reason for, for letting him go obviously it meant they could get Greg Burke in who they see as more of the long term um, position in the forward pack and it means they can shift out someone who isn't committed to the club beyond this year we did have a few views in um, 
from a variety of people here before we give our views on it. And Sam Richmond, at Sammy Rich, who's a new one on me, but thanks for getting in touch, Sam. Said, great deal for us at Salford. Neil McEwen said... Burke for Haraki should have been the deal. Adding Chamberlain is crazy, seeing as we only have Runcom and Fit to play in the centres. Haraki is 33, so it's a weird choice. I'd rather have got Tyrone McCarthy in exchange. If you were picking, you might. If you're